So let's talk a little bit more about this with our Newswatch panel. Jim Pinkerton is contributing editor and writer for the American Conservative Magazine. Ellen Ratner, Bureau Chief of Talk Radio News Service and a Fox News contributor. Jim, you are fond of saying that information wants to be free. So in James Rosen's case, since when does a reporter doing his job, when does that amount to criminal co-conspiracy? Well, according to Glenn Greenwald, who is a left-of-center uh, columnist for The Guardian, which is a left-of-center newspaper in, in the UK, uh, the Justice Department had every intention of, of trying to throw James Rosen in jail and convict him of, of crimes. They, they, they had this new vision of uh, uh, investigating leaks, which, as Greenwald says in his piece, involves solicitation. That is, it's, it's, it's not a crime to print classified information. It's a, it's a crime to leak classified information. It's not a crime to print it. So they had to say, well, James was actually soliciting these these, uh, these sources at the State Department to, to give him stuff, and that was a crime. Um, this, this, according to Greenwald, is completely, absolutely unprecedented in, in U.S. history. You know, Ellen, nobody wants to see, uh, you know, secrets that are going to really endanger the nation uh, out there leaked, but this was going to be this transparent, most transparent administration in history. Yes, and there have been lots of people who have actually written about that. Paul Thacker and Slate wrote about the sort of history of this most transparent uh, government in history. But I also want to say something. I'm on the um, U.S. Board of Reporters Without Borders, and supposedly the president is supporting the shield law. Well, we would like to make it so that, one, it becomes actually a criminal act to try and identify who a newspaper's or news organization's source is, which would, of course, make the government uh, uh, criminally active here, not James Rosen. And also, we believe, look, we should, we should protect something that is going to be imminent danger. We don't want any news organizations uncovering a plot that, it's, that would protect somebody from imminent danger. Everybody agrees on that. But this is beyond, beyond taking somebody's records when they're in and out of the building, comparing them to somebody else's records. Mm. I, I just, I, I can't even talk. I'm so upset. Jim is probably less upset than I am. Maybe he's <laughs> as upset, but I'm pretty well, upset. Jim is a very intellectual guy, and he can process this stuff a lot faster than the rest of us can. But Jim, I mean, you know, I wake up and I read in the Washington Post that our colleague James Rosen is having his personal emails snooped at by federal agents. That's a little creepy. Well, it, it is a little creepy, and, and, and interesting enough, Ryan Lizza, who is a reporter for the New Yorker magazine, uh, sent out a, a tweet this morning saying that this, this, this uh, Department of Justice investigation on Rosen makes all the other scandals look like, quote, giant nothing burgers, unquote. Now, uh, uh, the idea being here, this, this is really a, a quantum leap, even for this administration, on investigating, as Greenwald points out, the, this, the Obama administration has investigated and, and prosecuted more leakers than all other presidents put together. And, and that's well, leakers. You know, that's supposed to leak, it, leak it, ease. I mean, I mean, Rosen's a leaky, if you will, a, yeah. a recipient of leaks. And now they're trying to go after him, too. And, who, and by the way, we're not even done yet. Who knows what tomorrow's news will bring? Well, well, Alan, FOIA what? requests, FOIA requests, 50 percent uh, of FOIA requests more are denied under Obama than Bush. And as we say in the, in the news business, this is having a chilling effect on news gathering. Well, that, that is the question. I mean, do, does all of this scouring, you know, for information about reporters and their sources, what is the effect? effect on journalism in this country. Ellen, what do you think? Well, as I said, I think it's having a chilling effect. It's going to make, as the AP uh, president said, it's going to make people think twice before they talk to us. I mean, you know, we live and breathe. Our bread and butter is leaks and people telling us what's in the government. And you know something? When I first became a journalist, I said, I don't know about this. And a friend of mine at the White House said, this is what keeps democracy, is open journalism. Uh, Jim, in the meantime, uh, the National Journal, just during the course of the, that we've been on the air, the National Journal out online, uh, came out with a helpful bit of advice for the Obama administration. It's an article titled, Five Ways Obama Can Restore the Public's Trust and Rescue His Presidency. And Ron Fournier, the author, includes this line in the opening, swamped in controversies, President Obama and his slow-footed team are essentially telling the American public, we're not crooked, we're just incompetent.
<laughs> Some helpful advice there from the media. What do you think, Yeah, I mean, it's, it's sort of the, 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 the President Obama's Mr. Magoo strategy. He doesn't see anything going on around him, and, and it's other people's job to keep him from getting killed at the construction site, or all those Mr. Magoo cartoons had. Or it's like Sergeant Schultz and Hogan's Heroes. He sees nothing. I, I don't think this is sufficient. I think that the, the, if, if the President doesn't want to take responsibility as an executive of the federal government for doing for managing these things then they're going to have to fire a lot of people and put in somebody else who will because uh, obviously this, this status quo is unacceptable and it's not me or Ellen saying that it's the, pretty much the entire journalistic establishment well they are giving us plenty to talk about in these news watch segments that's one thing they're doing Jim uh, Jim Pinkerton Alan Ratner thank you both